Okay, welcome back. It's a uh, nice, like, warm and sunny day in New York, which is giving this, like, you know, super high exposure behind me, but I think uh, hopefully it's okay. I hope it's um, a nice sunny day wherever wherever you're watching this from. Um, but, okay, so we've been, the last couple of days have been intense for sure. There's been so much, uh, like, it's been, we've been really kind of like hammering in on one specific topic and going deep and explored like a lot of different sides of it, the arts aspect, the emotional aspects, um, yeah, many, many different dimensions of it. And so to recap, basically I've been working on, uh, I was working on this drawing, uh, which is flipped because uh, we're in the, like the, I'm using the front camera on my phone, so it's gonna be flipped. Um, but, you know, there's been some issues with this, which I think are like actually pretty apparent when it's flipped. Um, and so I've really been like struggling with trying to understand why, because I took like it, there's about four or five different parts where I'm kind of like slowly working on this. This is like a, a five hour drawing, which it definitely doesn't look like that. Um, and so I was having a lot of trouble. So I did some additional drawings. Um, here's another, you know, flip drawing, but of the same, this was like only 45 minutes. And then I did it again, another time, 45 minutes. And then I even, um, have in my sketchbook uh, find it yeah here it is um, I have another uh, another one of these in my sketchbook um, so I've done four different actually this one is, is pretty nice except for the fact that it doesn't fully capture the tilt like you can see here um, the tilt of the face versus this is kind of like a more accurate tilt uh, but just as like a, a block in this actually looks kind of nice um, but regardless, these four different versions, I seem to be having a lot of trouble with this particular gesture. Um, and so I mentioned like, okay, one of the things I would love to do is find like an artist that I admire or like a master and see how they've tackled the same gesture. And so I went onto Chris Legospi's Instagram page, excuse me, and it's a great resource for, um, it's a great resource for portraits because he has like over a thousand posts on his Instagram and like a vast majority of them are our portraits in different angles. And so I was able to find like a few examples that were kind of close, not exactly, but kind of close. And I was kind of noticing actually that like they weren't my favorite Chris Legospi drawings actually. And I was kind of noticing like a bit of like a few errors. Um, I mean, in general, he's a pro, one of the best artists, living artists. So and this is not me trashing him by any means, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I think that it speaks a little bit to this might be a more difficult pose than I realize. And it, there might be like reasons why, you know, for example, here, it seems to look a little bit nicer when it's less exaggerated. Um, I noticed like there were many more where it was like, if it was going to be, you know, this like kind of angle like this, that it was more turned. So it was almost like you're seeing way more of this bottom plane. Um, so it, it might be a difficult pose. Now, this is like a little bit of a cop out because the reality is there should be no gesture that's like too difficult to make a good drawing out of. Like, that's just not a reality. Like at, at some, like that there's no, there's, yeah, there's no gestural pose that's beyond a good drawing or a good solution. Um, but I will say it made me feel a little bit better that, okay, it's possible that actually this is like, even though it's a beautiful photo is maybe not the best reference um, for a drawing. Now, that being said, I'm not giving up on it. And I would like to go back to this again at some point, um, but I think it's worth taking a break. Like I'm a little bit sick of this gesture and I would imagine if I'm sick of it, then probably the viewing audience, let's say, will be sick of it. Um, so I think for today, we're gonna do um, another drawing where we'll kind of focus on um, uh, the, I think I'm do a process drawing today, actually, instead of focusing on line or block in. So process being 2D construction, 3D construction, uh, block shadows, mass shadows, work on the edges. This is like a big one that I need to work on is edges. And unfortunately, you can't really work on edges until you get all the way to that point. Um, and then working and then half tones. Um, and I care the least about the half tones, actually. Like I'm, I'm pretty much comfortable taking it to this, this stage. Um, but focusing, you know, on clearly and keeping these pieces of the uh, drawing kind of separate um, and hopefully come up with, you know, something that's like somewhat decent. Um, and I think it'll be like nice break 
from what we were doing, and we might return to that sometime soon or in the near future. Uh, but let's let's take like a little break and kind of explore some some different images. Um, but I haven't like you know what I would like to do just quickly like this was a drawing that was done on kind of like a uh, like a thicker cardstock, um, and I talk about the materials a bit in the other video. But anyway, I was doing that for the intention of kind of like having like a nice finished drawing, um, something that could be like a portfolio piece as opposed to something that's just living in the sketchbook. So I might go back to that a little bit. Um, yeah, I might go back to that. Let's see, because I, I still want a kind of portfolio piece portrait at this point in my drawing. Uh, so maybe I'll find a gesture that I like, that I do a nice sketch of, complete sketch of, and then we'll do a uh, uh, portrait of it as opposed to the other way around this time where I kind of, you know, just did a block in once and then I went for the full thing and now I'm kind of like backtracking and trying to redo it. Let's let's do like a, a more correct order on, on how that process should be. Uh, but okay, I have about an hour to draw, maybe like a little bit less, so let's just jump into it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, so that was actually kind of a quick drawing. I think like in total, oh wow, look at that glare, kind of cool. Um, I think in total I probably did, uh, I don't know, probably only like 35, 40 minutes on the drawing. And I would say that the last like five or 10 minutes that I was drawing were kind of like even unnecessary and maybe even I, I pushed things like too far in some places than I should have. Um, this was kind of, this was a nice reference. The funny thing is like, it's very similar to the other reference with the exception that you're not seeing the underneath the chin, right? So it's not like the camera is below, but the camera is like more above actually. And the difference that that makes and like the way that you draw and the ease of drawing is like so much. Um, because I think one of the challenges on the other on the other image is like really capturing like where the bottom plane should be. And I'm kind of looking at it right now. Um, so I think there's some complications there, but anyway, like as I was drawing it, I was like, man, it's funny. This is so sim, like so, so similar yet a totally different feeling. Um, and overall, actually, I like how this sketch came out. I think there's some like decently nice line work. There's some nice graphical quality. Um, I didn't end up doing halftones. I just kind of took it to edges and played with edges a little bit. Um, and again, I also like how those came out. I noticed some weird things that I did. Like I need to be more consistent with where I'm putting hard edges, like, um, Generally, like hard edges you use for one side of the shadow, like I, I tend to use it for the side of the shadow that's like, like how do I want to explain this? If the sun is coming from, if the light source is coming from this side, let's say, and there's like a little shadow that's being cast by underneath the, the lip, then that would be the hard edge of the shadow that's in line with, that's like perpendicular, if you will, to the, uh, to the light source. But then the other side, I like to make it like a little bit softer. Um, so there's like one or two areas actually where I kind of mix that up, like on the cheek, I think I put the hard edge underneath and I would have rather put the hard edge on top would have made um, a bit more sense. But anyway, kind of a nice little drawing and like a nice little image, like some nice graphical qualities. It would be nice for Inktober actually. Um, for the most part, proportions are looking okay. I think that there's like a bit of an issue with the width of the face. Um, but actually this could be the one that I pursue. This is kind of like a little bit my style. Like I like images that have a large shadow area, like a lot of hair and like, so I can kind of group everything together. I really like that kind of grouping. Um, I think it has like really nice aesthetic qualities, but it also just kind of stylistically like resonates with me. Um, so maybe I'll do, I don't know, maybe we'll do one more of these or something and then go into trying to do like a, a bigger drawing with it. Um, it should also go faster because so much of it is in shadow. And there's also not as many complications with the gesture, like in terms of there's no ear exposed um, and some other things like this, like some other like uh, nice graphical qualities. So nice to get a, like feel like I did a good drawing after so, so many days of struggling with that other gesture. Um, it's just good for, good for some basic morale. Even though I guess like the enlightened artist should be happy with they're like should be judging themselves only on progress and and try and like keep some kind of distance or some kind of you know yeah distance between themselves and their drawing so like in theory you should not be too disappointed by a bad drawing and also not too happy by a good drawing um, but instead just be focused on your process whatever you're trying to practice or whatever you're trying to learn um, but that level of emotional detachment is pretty difficult and comes with like a lot of uh, a lot of practice over time I realize my camera is a little bit on tilt. Uh, well, actually, it's actually kind of nice timing because I think that that's a kind of a nice summary for where we're at today. Um, and let's see tomorrow again. I might do the same drawing, or we might move on to something else. Let's see before before going back in. Um, oh, and other thing is like this is like a little bit of a tease. Uh, eventually, we're gonna have some painting come into play. Like I've always considered myself more of a painter than like a draftsman. Um, but of course, like drawing is like the most fundamental skill of art. If you can't draw, then you can't paint either. Um, so just one, like we'll, we'll get back to painting soon, especially like working with colors and, you know, interesting compositions and things like that. Uh, but for right now, we're just focused on, on improving our, uh, observation skills, improving process, improving gesture, improving line, like kind of these like universal skills of art. Okay, cool.